All right, so Nick asked me a question. And Nick's question was, he was studying, I'm going to paraphrase this question. Okay, and, it, and it, the, here's the basic question. Okay, do surveyors determine boundaries in the United States? Yes or no? Do they determine the location of boundaries? Um, so I'm just going to go around the room and let everybody get an answer to that question. What do you think, Michaela? Mm -hmm. I don't really understand, like... Yeah. It's a trick question. That's why you don't understand. Hunter, what do you think? We don't. Okay, Nick? Don't. Elena? No. Angelo? I'm not sure. Danny, what do you think? Only a judge does. Hey, what do you guys, hold on a minute. You're telling me we don't determine boundaries? No, we show where they are on the ground. And it's a really... Wait, well, a, hold, well, now, wait a minute. You guys are crazy. If we don't, how would, raise your hand if you said we don't determine boundaries. Raise your hand. Right? What do you mean we don't determine boundaries? That's what people pay us to do, right? No, they don't. Okay, yeah, so you guys are right on being a jerk to prove a point. If you ask Monique if I determine boundaries on a boundary survey, what will she probably say? Yes. And almost everybody that hires us, what do they think the answer to that question is? Yes. Okay, so, so I'm going to give you the technical answer to the question and explain it, and then I'm going to tell you why it doesn't really apply, okay? So it's a nuance. In life, it's what we call a nuance, right? In other words, real life is complicated. The answer isn't always simple. Okay, so technically, under the letter of the law, land surveyors in the United States do not, I'm trying to think about, I'm trying to think of how I want to word this. We do not have the final say on where a boundary is. Let me put it that way, okay? So there are other parts of the world where the surveyor comes out and does the survey and he sets his monuments and that's where the line is, period, end of discussion. Okay. Now, I have often thought to myself, wouldn't life be easier if we just lived in a world like that? Okay. But here's the problem. There's a bunch of guys running around doing crappy boundary surveys and I don't know that that would be a better world necessarily. Okay. So here's, so technically under the legal system in the United States, we do not determine the final location of the boundary. We offer an opinion as to where the location of the boundary is. Now, there's some good things about that, and there's some bad things about that. So I want to explain it, and I'm going to tell you why that's not really how the world works. Okay? That's the letter of the law, but that's not how the world functions. And I want to explain the difference. Okay? So here's why it's a good thing. It's a good thing because um, if I do a boundary survey, and the client doesn't like my answer for where the boundary's at, they can't sue me. I mean, they can't sue me, but they won't win. Okay, because it's just my professional opinion. And in order to sue a surveyor and win in court over his boundary survey, you gotta prove that I was negligent. Okay? Does anybody know what negligent means? Careless in the work you did. Or... And that it's intentional, right? Yeah. yeah, it would be negligent. This is negligent. Well, it has to be real too, doesn't it? Nope. Yeah. Negligent means I knew it was my job and I didn't do it. Okay. So you got to be able to prove that. Okay. So if we do a good job and the client doesn't like our answer, they're out of luck. Danny, does that ever happen? Yeah. Yeah. This, Danny and I have had a lady that just was, she fired us and went and hired another surveyor because she didn't like my answer. Okay. But she couldn't sue me. She couldn't sue me because we did a good job. No. Different one. Okay. So, um, Okay, so that's the good side. Uh, here's the bad side. The bad side is if I go out and do a survey for Nick, let's say Nick hires us to survey his property, and I go out and do a survey and we set corners, and Nick's neighbor doesn't like my survey, he can go hire another survey and get a completely different answer, and now we got a problem that's got to go to court. That's basically how, how it gets fixed, and that's expensive. So that's the downside of the system, right? So the upside is it's really hard to sue me and win. Okay. The downside is uh, if you got two surveyors that don't agree, you got to go to court. Answer. Okay. Because otherwise, if we if we lived in another country that didn't have that that situation, I do the survey for Nick. Nick pays my bill. I slide the corner over a few feet because he put a little extra on the check, mm -hmm. and Nick's neighbor's host because mm -hmm. I have the authority to determine where the boundaries at. Okay. So in America, we are really red blooded about our private property rights, and we don't let surveyors do that. Okay. So we tell, we, if any time there's a dispute between surveyors about the location of the boundary, we basically say you got to go see a judge, and a judge will decide. 
where the boundaries are. So we have a right to life, liberty, and property. That's right. You got before we can take your before they will let a surveyor take your private property, you have a right to due process in the United States of America. Okay? It's a beautiful thing. Alright, okay, so that's all great, but that's not how the world really works. Okay, so let me tell you why. Okay, so although technically we do not determine the location of boundaries, the final location of boundaries, everybody pretends like we do. Okay, how many boundary surveys that I've ever done have gone to court in 20 years to be challenged? Less than one hand. Zero. Every single boundary survey I have done has been accepted by all the parties. And I suspect I will probably go through my entire career and never have one of my boundary surveys challenged in court. Because what kind of work do we do? Good work. Excellent work. Good work. And do I set property corner monuments when I've got huge encroachments? I don't think, well, I, I'll be very surprised if I ever have a boundary survey under, overturned by a judge. Okay? So, in essence, when I set my corners and say that's where the line's at, what does everybody act like? They take this law. They, 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 so, we pretend surveyors have that authority in America, even though they really don't. And that's also the type of client we're doing work for, too. We're not doing work Yeah, for but I'm even talking about the neighbors. So think about this for all practical purposes. We go out and we do a boundary survey. I, we survey the Steed Estate. And I set my rebar and cap. And Nick's neighbor comes out there and, and wanders over one morning after he feeds the cows. And he looks at that and he says, hey, Nick, what's this? And Nick says, oh, we got a survey. That's the property corner. Does that guy go, oh, well, that's just his professional opinion. I can go get a different opinion if I want. Is that what he says? He looks at the monument and goes, yeah, well, that must be the corner. Because what does he assume about me? You're a professional. I'm a licensed land surveyor. And if you ask most people in America, does a licensed land surveyor determine the location of the boundary, what would they tell you? Yeah. Yes. They'd say yes. Right? Okay. So, and we also set beautiful two and a half inch aluminum caps. Right? So somebody walks up and they go, man, that looks like pretty official right there. Look at this guy. <laughs> oh, you think I'm joking? That's, I'm why we I'm we that's why I said what I said, right? Like if they walked up and they saw a little wooden hub with a tack in it, and they like, I don't know, like, that's the corner? Like, no, they walk up and they see my two and a half inch aluminum cap with my seal on it. It says official survey by RH, whatever we put on there, right? And they're like, <laughs> land in blood. Man, yeah, that must be the corner, right? Okay. So, let's think about what that means for a minute. Okay, what that means is, now, you, now you're starting to understand why boundary surveyors are what we call professionals. Because to, to, when you're a professional, that means you not only have a responsibility to treat your client a certain way, but you have a responsibility to the public. Okay, so what is my responsibility to make sure that monument is in the correct location when I set it? How, how, uh, how heavy is that responsibility? It's, it's, a, it's responsibility. your job. Yeah, You're because the livelihood to be because eventually. the uneducated public is going to assume what once my mom's on the ground. That's where it is. So I, I have a sacred responsibility to not abuse that trust that the public has put in me, right? The, the, the public puts a huge amount of trust in the. They don't even question our work, ninety nine percent of the time because they don't understand. Because they don't understand, right? Like the only time they question it is when they get a lawyer that actually knows better. Okay, and and like, look, I read court decisions in California made by judges who don't understand that the surveyor might have got it wrong. Like somebody goes out and gets a survey. There's all kinds of court cases in California, like people fighting over a wall or a fence or a garage. It's like nobody ever asked the question: Did the surveyor do the do the job right? Did he put the line in the wrong spot? Like somebody gets a survey, and the attorneys and the jury and the judge and the neighbors. What does everybody involved in the dispute assume? That's what means. Oh, well, they got a survey. That must be the right answer. I started working with one of the land attorneys we work with, our friend Dan, and he's like, you know, he, he, we talk about his first couple case and cases, and I'm like, well, you know, we need to find out if the guy, if the surveyor did a survey correctly. And Dan's like, what are you talking about? I'm like, well, how do we know the line's in the right spot? He's like, well, there was a survey. I mean, I know, I understand there was a survey, but how do we know that the guy did it right? He's like, I don't even understand. What, what do you mean? He didn't do it right. He's a surveyor, right? I had to explain to Dan, who's been practicing law for decades, like, yeah, no, there's a bunch of yahoos running around, right, doing crappy boundary surveys. It would be like us not knowing our way through the law, the ins and outs, and yeah. just assuming the lawyers yeah. know what they're doing. And the lawyers know what they're doing. Okay, so there is a name for that phenomenon that we've described where the public just trusts that the surveyor has followed the law in his work. And put, the, and put the line in the correct location. No, it's oh, not it like <laughs> it's called. It's called, the surveyor has what's called a quasi-judicial role. 
Okay, so quasi-judicial means like a judge, but not quite. Okay, so who, who, I just told you, in the United States, who ultimately has the final say on where the line's at? The judge. The judge. Okay, but surveyors act like judges. So, just out of curiosity, yeah. so when you get two conflicting surveys and they both testify in court, how do they decide that? Because if the two surveyors are both in there's all There's all kinds of, there's a process that the court goes through. Okay, yeah. okay so, but, but like, I told you before, how many surveys, boundary surveys that I will do, yeah. do I ever expect to get questioned in a court? They don't. I probably never. Like, the, the, the percentage of surveys that get questioned in court is so minutely small. Even the one and, I'm on where the neighbors were suing each other it got settled by a third lawyer who's... Yeah, I mean, it just rarely ever happens. Okay, so Hunter got me a little bit distracted. Oh, so in what way, when I'm out doing a boundary survey, in what way do I act like a judge? Let's think about it for a minute. What's the process we go through? When you're doing a boundary survey, when you're setting... When we're, 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 when we're determining the location of a boundary, why do I go out... Danny and I took a whole day to drive all the way to Walnut Grove to look at Snug Harbor Boundary Survey. We didn't get paid for that trip. Danny and I made that trip all the way out there so I could look at it. Mm -hmm. Okay, why? Well, how do I act like a judge? Danny, how did I act like a judge when I was at Snug? Okay, think about, I'm gonna give you guys an example. There's a, there's a, um, so I got, I got a hit and run. Somebody hit and ran into me and took off looking at a few months ago. Okay, yeah, we're getting close, so just hang tight. Okay, sorry. Okay, so I get hit and run, okay? And it didn't go to court, but let's say it went to court. And there's no jury, it's just a judge trial, okay? Okay, so the judge sits down, right? Angelo hit, and, hit me in his Camaro, T-boned me, ran a red light, okay? But Angelo says that I ran the red light, and I said that Angelo ran the red light. Okay, so what does the judge have to do? He has to get to the truth. How does he do that? Examining the evidence. He looks at evidence, right? He hears the testimony of the parties, and then he considers the legal principles, and he applies the legal principles to the facts, and he comes up with a determination. Why do I go on the ground for every boundary survey? How am I acting like a judge? Going looking at evidence. So, Danny, what did I do when we were at Snug? Did I get out of the truck? Barely. Oh, this guy's killing me. What did I do when I got out of the truck? We weren't there very long. We were there an hour. You dug with your fingers because I couldn't get my drawer open. When yeah, the, the drawer would jam. So, but it, but every time, everywhere we stopped, I think there was one or two, one or maybe two corners that we didn't dig up because the landowner had buried him again. But on all the other corners that you guys found, and there was a bunch, we found a dozen corners. What did I do at every corner? You looked at every single one of them. I looked at the corner, and then I asked Danny, Danny, here's what I see. What did we show on the survey, and what was there per record? And then I stood back, and I looked at the corner, and I looked at lines of occupation, and I said, does this line up? And like there was a couple places where like we had some fences and some outbuildings that were 10 feet over the line. So I'm looking at that, I'm saying, all right, what is the, is the, is the fence in the wrong spot, or is the corner in the wrong spot, right? And then Danny and I went down to the gate, and I looked on the one line that we had, the dry line that we had with the adjoiners. I was, I was looking at occupation. Do we have a potential problem here, right? So that was, now, you guys have already done a ton of work, right? Compiling the records and doing the calculations, okay? So you guys have already done a bunch of, a bunch of evidence gathering and analysis on your behalf, okay? But then I personally make a trip out to look at the physical evidence in the field, right? So I can see whether or not this, the resolution that you guys have come up with fits the evidence and the principles of law, okay? And that's why I do that on every single boundary survey, right? We go, when Hunter gets licensed or Danny gets licensed, then that, then that will be their responsibility, right? So now you guys see why I get so irritated when we come back from the field survey and we don't have a picture of every property corner, right? That's important. You know, I gotta be able to stand up in front of a judge. The judge is gonna ask me, Landon, did you examine and evaluate all of the evidence? And I have to be able to say yes. If I don't, what can he say about my work? You're negligent. Then I'm negligent, right? Okay, now most boundary surveyors do not do this. Okay, but I, it's important to me. That's why I want to see every side. I want to be able to look at a judge and tell him. I, so here's the first thing I tell an attorney. When I'm working for an attorney and we've got a boundary dispute, the first thing I tell him is ask the licensed surveyor if he was on the ground. Because most of the time, how does the licensed surveyor have to answer that question if he's being truthful? No. Okay, so then the next question the attorney asks is, well, how, Danny, if you were the licensed land surveyor, did you properly collect and evaluate evidence like a judge should if you were never on the ground? Well, isn't that a crew? Okay, so then Danny can make some arguments there. Well, I sure. checked the field notes, I looked at the photos, all right? 
But like, look, if you're the judge and you're sitting there and Danny's the licensed surveyor, and he said, well, it's an Angelo. Yeah. All right? How does that make the judge feel? Yes. Like, look, if we're, if, if Danny and I are, are both the licensed surveyors on opposite sides of a dispute, and I tell the judge I was there in person and I physically touched every pipe and rebar, and Danny says, well, I sent Angelo to do it. Okay, the first thing the judge is going to say is, who's Angelo? <laughs> and why is he not in this court? Okay, so then, no, I'm not joking. So then the judge, what the judge might say is, all right, we're going to take a one-day recess. Tomorrow I want Angelo in this courtroom. That's no joke. I actually went and sat on a stand in a boundary dispute. Yep. Okay, so here's and the problem. Now, I was I'm, just a field guy. I was just Angelo. Yep. And he said... He was, said, I want to talk to the guy that was there. Wow. What okay. corner did you find? When did you find it? Yeah. Did you, now, here's the problem. Did you survey it? What kind of instrument did you use? Yep. Wow. Okay, now, I'm the licensed land surveyor, right? And the judge is like, yeah, but you weren't there. I want to talk to the guy that was there. And so, the next day, Angelo shows up. Now, I love Angelo. He's got a handsome face. But Angelo's 18 years old. How long have you been surveying, Angelo? Almost two years. About a year, year and a half. Yeah, maybe two years. Okay. So then the judge is like, all right, hold on. Let me get this straight. You were never there, and you got this Yahoo over here driving a Camaro who was there. He's only been, he's been surveying, he's been surveying less than my law clerk. You know, has been, you know, my, my law clerk's done more surveying than him. Right? And that's the guy that you relied on to evaluate the evidence. Okay? Now you see why I go to every site. Right? Okay, so quasi-judicial means like a judge. Okay, so we function like a judge, and when I make a determination based on all the evidence and the legal principles, what do typically members of the public treat that decision like? Like it came from where? Like it came from a judge. That and in that way we are quasi-judicial. Okay, so I printed you guys two articles. Okay. So does that mean, Landon, that when when maps are filed mm -hmm. with the counter recorder and they go on file in public and they're available on record, anybody who looks at that mapping, anyone who looks at the information presented on that map is not looking at judicial decision? Okay, so let me give you, a, I'm going to caveat that a little bit. Okay, so there's two cases and I won't get lost in the weeds here, but when we're doing a subdivision, the interior lines of the subdivision have some special sacredness, right? Where I say those lines are is where they are. Because you create Because they're new lines. I'm the creating surveyor. It's what we call the first, we call it first steel. Because they used to be, they used to have a steel tape. First steel in. So if you're the if you're the guy that creates the boundaries, you get some special deference under the law. Okay, but if you're retracing a survey, yeah. so a subdivision map gets some special deference on the inside lines. If you're just doing if you're just doing a retracement survey, it's just my opinion. Okay, so um, now you go down to the county surveyor and like here's what happens all the time. Michaela goes down, she's fighting with her neighbor. She goes down to the county, she says, I fight with my neighbor, where's my parcel? Okay, now most of the time they hand her a tax assessor map. But let's just say she happens to talk to somebody with a half a brain and they say, oh yeah, here's the, here's, somebody did a survey of your parcel and they hand Michaela the survey, okay? She takes a survey and what she go tell her neighbor? I got a survey. Yeah, here's the survey, move your, move your fence. Okay, does Michaela go down there and say, look, I know this guy was only in a quasi-judicial capacity, and this is only his professional <laughs> opinion of where the line is, and it could be in a different place. If you hire your own surveyor, you might find that out. No, what does Michaela think when she gets the survey from the county? That line this is official. Like, this guy's a surveyor. This is, this is truth. This is absolute gospel. Okay? So there's only one small group of people in society that know that that's a bunch of bull crap and that surveyors half the time don't do a good job. And who is that group? The, the good surveyors. surveyors. The other surveyors, yes. Only we know how easy it is to challenge the answer, right? Because we're half baking our own solutions, right? So, as a general rule, the public does not know that. So, I gave you two articles, okay? I don't expect you to read them, but they're here for you if you would like to read them, okay? But this one is by the guy who came up with this very idea, whose name was Justice Thomas Cooley, and he wrote this article 100 years ago, probably, called The Quasi Judicial Function of Surveyors, okay? It will put you to sleep if you try and read it. Okay, but it's not my idea. This is the guy that came up with the idea. And what he does, if you just thumb through and look at the subheadings, he talks about all the questions that a surveyor may have to collect evidence about and evaluate when he's doing a survey. And there's a bunch. There's, a, there's three or four or half a dozen things. Okay? Now, this article you might be able to read without going to sleep. Okay? Did you write this? I wrote this one. So read this. It's called The Weight of Monument Placement. And it, 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 it's on the same theme. Okay? And the theme is, you know, the theme is, when you set a monument as a surveyor, 
what is the what is the significance of that? And it's viewed differently by different people. So I go in here and I talk about how it's viewed by non-surveyors, how is it viewed by by other surveyors, how is it viewed by the legal system? Okay, so and everybody, those three groups I mentioned, you know, the public, the surveyor, and the judge, they all three view monument placement in a slightly different way. Should I, as a licensed surveyor, understand how different people are going to look at that? Yeah, absolutely I should. Okay? So what I, I think what I would like you guys to do, this is just a suggestion, but um, you guys should all have a binder and you just you can keep your reference material when we print it, you know, for first fantastic first Friday or Kevin and like just have a boundary tab in there and throw this stuff under the boundary tab. Because like one of these days when you're studying for you know a test or something, you guys will have the material with you. Okay. And by the way, we have the full Alta spec. It's under uh, survey survey specs. Land title survey is the full 2021 spec is there. You have my permission to print that out and keep it. Um, if you work on Alta surveys here, what should you have? That. Probably your person. You should have a personal marked up tab highlighted copy of the Alta survey spec. You should probably have that. Okay. So we got some homework to do. We're going to find out what the client ticked on the table A for offsite easements, and then um, we're going to check that adjoiner D, see if it goes to the water's edge or if it stops somewhere else on the levee. Okay. And is that something you want me to do after I get done with Angelo? Or we got like five, ten minutes left? They're all left done on Angelo's stuff, so you can pull that adjoiner if you want. Okay. Okay. All right. Did we learn anything? Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, what time is it? We probably got to have our other meeting. <laughs> okay, so you get a five minute break if you worked on work from home and then be back at the table. Por favor. What's the third reading? Work from home. The work